Okay, hey everybody, welcome to the video. Um, so today we have uh, Jim Ng, he's a SEO agency owner. Uh, he runs SEO, uh, SEO for uh, in Singapore, he does it for multiple like the big universities in Singapore as well as uh, multiple uh, retail businesses as well. Uh, today we invited him to kind of like answer your questions about SEO in terms of like, because uh, a lot of uh, the audience is e-commerce related. So we want him to actually give some insights like from his perspective, right? Because he sees data across uh, industry and like to share the things that have worked so far. Okay, so I mean, uh, Daniel's on the call right now. So uh, let me just shut up. And then after that, uh, we'll ask the questions in the group as well. Okay, so I mean, uh, Daniel, actually you can go ahead, um, ask Jim anything uh, that you want. Yeah, uh, okay. go ahead. To be honest, I don't really have any questions. So okay. we can go through the questions in the group. Okay, okay, sure. can. Cool. So I mean, Jim, uh, a lot of the audience I said for is like in the e-commerce space. Okay, so I mean the mm -hmm. first question from uh, Hi, he like to mm -hmm. ask, Hi Jim, I'd like to know, uh, are there any SEO apps in Shopify that you think are worth installing? And if you have any, please recommend. Honestly, right, I think uh, don't get too hung up like with all the apps, especially on Shopify. Uh, I think generally, if you use Shopify's default, uh, you know, SEO title and SEO meta description and URL, uh, you're pretty fine. Actually. Yeah, you're fine actually. <laughs> you think about it like SEO, right? If you try to do too much technical SEO and you know you try to install too much Shopify apps to bloat the whole website, it actually slows down the website. It doesn't do you any good, right? So the only thing that I would really recommend you to install is just uh, there's this plugin, right? It's called like a it's a it's called Review Schema on on Shopify. It's a paid it's a paid uh app. I think it costs about. I can't recall, it's between like $3 or $10 per month. That thing probably gives you like the ability to kind of have a, you know, a five stars rating for products in terms of e-commerce on the store. Uh, but somehow my client actually removed that. So they're actually doing fine anyways. <laughs> like right now there's on the feature snippet for like multiple keywords. So I don't think it's, uh, it's that big of a deal. Uh, so, I wouldn't really ha like be so hung up on the Shopify apps and stuff because the more, again, I just want to remind you guys, right? The more you install, the more bloat the website is going to be, like in terms of the bloat code and the slower it's going to load. So don't be too hung up on that and just make sure like you change the top three stuff, right? Which is the title tag, the URL structure, and also the, the meta description, right? On your main, call landing pages, right, that you are optimizing for on your e-commerce. So for instance, like, um, say you're selling like golf sticks, right? Then you definitely want to make sure that, that there's one specific dedicated landing page, like specifically only filled with all the golf sticks, like there's hundred different golf sticks, right? And then at the bottom of the page, there's like a small little, nice little like 500 word copy. Uh, specifically having information about golf sticks, right? Like where do you buy golf sticks? Like what are the different types of golf sticks? You know, that kind of thing. So that would kind of like help you go a long way with like e-commerce, right? And subsequently you can kind of build like some niche edit links, right? What we could like to call niche edit. So what niche edit links really are is just uh, backlinks that are pointing from like other people's websites to essentially your Shopify store so that it can actually rank better on Google. So that's my advice, yeah. Okay, so I mean, Hai is asking, so I mean, this schema, I mean, so I'm just seeing on Shopify App Store, it's like 14.99 yeah, yeah. uh, per month, right? So I mean, this yeah. schema, like what, what does it actually do? And like, can you actually do it? Yeah. Without? Yeah. Yeah, so like you can actually do it even without, but uh, typically like with that schema thing, right? It's like, it actually allows the reviewer to kind of leave the five-star review. And you also allow it to appear on the snippet, uh, on the Google search result as well. So like, for example, if there are 10 people that leave a five-star review, then on the front end, right, when somebody search on the Google search engine results pages, it will appear that there is five stars with like 10 reviews and in stock, you know what I mean? So that's the whole objective of that. And it just looks prettier on the search engine results pages. That's the function that it serves. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Ajib, your mic a bit, Got a lot of echo. Is there any way to fix that or in my mind? I uh, is it very bad? Uh yeah, it's a bit bad. Okay, never mind, it's fine. Okay, let me continue the next question. Okay. So okay. 
because uh, a lot of the, the audience come from paid marketing background, right? So Facebook yeah. ads, drive traffic is like instant. So yeah. you're, not, you're not used to SEO. So they yeah, ask yeah. what, uh, I ask what can we expect from results, right? And how, how long should yeah. I? Yeah. yeah, so again, you gotta depend, it depends on your store. If it's a local localized store, or is it like an international store, right? Uh, if it's an international I think, store- I think a lot of the audience is mainly like just US and international, yeah. Okay, so if let's say you're just uh, based in the US, I think you stand a better chance uh, because if you have a certain domain, like let's say it's, um, uh, it's a niche store, right? Like you focus specifically on just like one type of product. I think you can see some results in SEO pretty quick because uh, uh, Google actually prefers like niche sites now. So you can see some results for like, let's say if I purely just sell like flowers and my whole website is just purely about flowers. Yeah. Like you would be able to see some decent results like fast. Right. And then if let's say you sell like internationally and you sell across like multiple range of products, uh, it might be a little bit tougher for you. Uh, because like of all the presence of like Alibaba, ASOS, you know, um, all the other e-commerce platforms like Amazon, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Like those are the big boys that kind of like have the organic traffic dialed in as well, simply because of how authoritative their websites are. So if you want to try to compete on an international level with the big boys, right, with the Ebays, with the Amazons, you know, you're just going to lose out. That's my take. And that's why for most of my clients, like in Singapore, we basically just, um, optimized for the Singapore market uh, with their domains being like .com.sg or .sg, that kind of thing. So if sorry, you want to like, saying, sorry, go ahead. Yep. yeah, if you want to like have a gauge, right, in terms of like how many months do I need to see results, typically it's between like six months onwards before you see anything. If you implement all the strategies that I laid out for you earlier, like you, you kind of want to like just wait a good six to 12 months before you see anything. Okay, understand. So what, what does uh, C results mean? Like what can they expect? Yeah, I mean like actual checkouts coming in uh, from your Google Analytics. Like if you were to look at one of my clients, right, that we did, uh, I mean, he was a little bit lucky because like at that point in time, it was like COVID-19 and stuff. Like just picked up in Singapore, right? And then people were not allowed to go out and buy bread. We got about, let's say, uh, $14,000 worth of sales uh, within like 21 days. So that itself, like with zero dollars in, like being invested, I would say, like the return on investment is basically infinite, <laughs> because like basically what's happening is like you get fourteen thousand of sales while spending zero dollars. So you gotta have that mindset shift, right, to say that oh, if I you know don't run paid traffic but I can get the sales, is this gonna be worth it to me, right? So naturally, SEO is like the last thing that you wanna think of, right? after you have exhausted all channels, right? After you have got your Facebook ads dialed in, after you've got your Google ads dialed in, after you've got your Instagram ads, you know, all the paid traffic sources, right? You have really exhausted them all. Then you want to think about SEO, yeah? Because that is kind of like, you know, all these paid traffic channels, it's your, it's basically your medicine that you want to take to kind of boost your performance, right? It's the steroids of your business. So definitely go with all the paid traffic sources first and only after they are exhausted, then you like want to take the, you know, the long-term game, right? I, like I always, I mean, I heard a comment yesterday, like on one of my videos uh, that kind of SEO is like planting a garden to kind of uh, reap the fruits, like, you know, many years to come, but, uh, uh, paid traffic, right? It's kind of like the, uh, like going to the grocery grocery store to buy vegetables immediately. You know what I mean? So you kind of got to have that patience to kind of uh wait for the results to come in. Yeah. Okay, I understand. So I mean, you, you kind of answered the, the the next question already. It's like, when shall we start doing SEO? Would you say, um, like for people who are like scared, uh, because they they start. Uh, with SEO, right? Because you're saying go into paid advertising first and try to accelerate growth and then go into SEO yeah. foundation. Yeah, do that. I would say do that any day of the week, man. Because honestly, like 
too many people in the internet industry, right? They're trying to hype up SEO, right? To say like, oh, it's the best thing in the world. But the reality is like with the competition and with the algorithm with Google these days, right? Google is only getting smarter and smarter. Like you're not going to outrank like Google's algorithm uh, simply because it's trained by an AI. And there's really isn't a way that you can kind of naturally trick uh, the algorithm to thinking that your website is better than somebody else's, right? The, the best you can do is just build your brand, right? The reality is you've got to build a brand. And no matter how hard you try to kind of rank your website without building a brand, it's just gonna, not going to cut it. So you need to pick your brand out there, accelerate its growth to the top, let people know of your brand first, and then, you know, the SEO juice and the SEO effects will naturally kick in. Right? It's like how Nike doesn't do any SEO, but it has like billions of dollars of organic traffic because it's a brand. It's a big brand. That's what <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So like, um, I guess I'm not sure whether it's a uh, better question, but it's like, so you run Google ads, right? Facebook ads, whatever it is. Yeah. And then people search yeah. for your brand uh, yeah. into Google itself and then search for it. So yeah. does that actually help and rank uh, rank even higher your yeah it does, it does yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so the more like google receives the signal right that your brand is highly sought after and it's useful and it's mostly typed by people along with the main keyword so like say for example your brand is like oxg media right and then if somebody types in like oxg media facebook marketing oh that automatically tells google that your brand is related to or if you meet, uh, your brand is related to Facebook marketing. Do you know what I'm saying? So that is a, how you build a brand by giving association to what your brand is towards. Yeah. Okay. So definitely yeah. does, definitely helps. Okay. The, the next question is, when when shall we start doing SEO? So I mean, because it was, okay, now we know we need to go to pay advertising first, right? But is there a point where it's like, okay, I hit this amount of revenue and then, okay, I should diversify the traffic source. Uh, yeah. Look, there really isn't a, I should say like a specific, oh, if you hit seven figures, you want to start SEO. There really isn't a specific blueprint for you. But uh, like I said, if you come to a situation, right, where spending more than $1,500 per day on Facebook doesn't yield you any more results and you would just start burning cash, then I think you can consider Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, next question. Last one from uh, Hi. How to decide if we should self do, basically do SEO yourself or outsource uh, the work? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. So um, I would say it depends on your store, right? Do you really need uh, more of a strategic kind of partner to give you the advice on how to do SEO and then you can autopilot and you know hire your own content writer, hire your own link builder, uh, and stuff or do you want to just kind of get rid of all of that right if you want to get rid of all of that then definitely hire the agency do it completely like on the ground for you but usually uh the way i service like my clients right is i kind of just want to equip them with the strategy in the sense that uh we do the first three months and then we give we pop them the, the uh you know the strategy the seo strategy that they're going to use for the next one year to two years to five years even and then once they are able to follow up on executing on that strategy, like they actually fight. Because after a certain point, right, SEO is nothing more than just like building content rather than like focusing on the technical SEO and the backlinks and all that kind of stuff. Like the backlinks is just an accelerant to kind of get into Google to show that, oh, your site is like highly sought after, you know, and people are talking about your website so that you can rank. But after a certain point, right, it's really not, so much about the backlinks is really more about the content uh, that you publish and you know it, it, it will naturally rank like for example like blog articles right like uh, I don't know like the other day like I was ranking for this <laughs> not the other day but currently if you go and type in to Google right now you were to type in like freelance web designer Singapore like there has probably like 200 months researchers like we rank on the first simply because we break down like the 12 top freelance web designers in Singapore, which incidentally includes me and my business partner. But uh, my point is like, these are the kind of uh, uh, content, right? Or articles, right? That I'm talking about 
Like, because after a certain point, like, it was really just writing content, really. Okay. Okay. Understand. So, I mean, you mentioned like a link builder and sort of thing. So, I mean, if they, if this guy wants to um, do SEO himself, like who does he need to hire on his team? Uh, first of all, they're making good money, right? I don't know. Maybe more than 50K a month already. They got some money to hire people, uh, scale up their business. Who should they be looking for? Yeah. So, the first person that I kind of say like you need to hire is basically like this guy that um, understands like technical SEO and on-page SEO, I guess. Uh, so what you want to do is you want him to audit your website. Uh, but if you're on Shopify, I think you're fine because Shopify has a pretty doubt in uh, SEO in system in place. Uh, and then what you want to do is you just want to do some keyword research, uh, find out the main keywords that, uh, you know, your store can target for organic search. Uh, and then just basically key in a competitor's URL into like a keyword research tool like Google Suggest or Google Keyword Planner or Ahrefs. And then what will happen is you can basically steal your competitor's keywords, right? So that's where you steal their traffic as well, yeah? So for example, if they rank number one for certain keywords, you want to just extract all of that and just put it in your store and just target those same keywords as well, yeah? And then at this point, right, you want to map all those keywords to specific strategic set of landing pages. Uh, like, and typically for e-commerce, right, it's just going to be... Uh, uh, each category pages in your store, like uh, Shopify's collections pages, basically. And then from there, what's going to happen is you're just going to uh, start building the content, like the 500 page copy that you park here at the bottom of the page, and then make sure that your collection pages are long enough with at least 20 to 30 products per collection. Uh, and then, of course, you want to start building links to those pages to make it look like that page is actually widely talked about. And what I would suggest, right, as a long-term game, like initially at the start, you might want to build like just a few links and stuff. You want to build an audience, right? You want to keep remarketing to your audience, right? Be it by form of like Facebook Live or YouTube or uh, content kind of strategy uh, by means of capturing the traffic, right? So if you got all their emails and you got all their uh, uh, many chat opt-ins and whatnot, right? Uh, what you want to do is you want to keep sending emails that will help these customers into making a decision to kind of make a purchase. Like create all these nice little blog articles, right, or listicles, and then start emailing it out to your list. That's how you actually build authority and you kind of grow your brand. Do you know what I mean? So try to focus less on like the, the shady things like the link building, right? The things that nobody see, right? It's like, the link building, the technical SEO, it doesn't help the user at all. Try to focus on things that helps the user, like by means of educating them about your brand, educating them about uh, your product, right? Because naturally, if you can produce content around that, like the videos and stuff, that will actually help you to add uh, more into your brand equity. And that would naturally give you the rankings in the long run. Okay. Okay, I, I think that was really useful. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I've heard um, Shopify, this is what I heard sometimes. Like Shopify yeah. sucks at SEO compared to something yeah. like WordPress, different CMS. What's your take on that? My take is um, there are certain limitations to Shopify CMS, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, Shopify doesn't allow you to kind of create sitemaps, like sitemap.xml files. Uh, doesn't allow you to have any control over the robots, text file. Uh, and definitely there are some certain limitations with the URL structures on Shopify as well. But I wouldn't say that that would be the stopping. It's not, it's not the, end, the end of the world if you use Shopify because like I have seen Shopify stores like having uh, thousands of dollars of like uh, organic traffic. Uh, so I don't think that's the issue. The issue is more of like whether you have an actual store that is like useful and it doesn't have a whole lot of like duplicate content right i mean if you're just like drop shipping from like overlo or something right then probably you will you'll find difficulty in trying to rank your store because it, cause it's all gonna just gonna be like duplicate products and stuff and if it's just a copy and paste of the description and copy and paste of the name of the product then we have probably like slightly of a problem now because duplicate content doesn't perform well on google mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't get penalized, but it just doesn't perform well. Yeah. Okay. 
can. So it's not necessary that the platform you're on just have have a clean page, uh, user experience, content, you should be fine. Yeah, hundred percent. So like a lot of times, right, it's the web design. Like if if your web design sucks and like they land on the first page and they bounce off, right, then it's the web design that's the problem. It's not necessarily the CMS. You know what I mean? If it's not mobile friendly and then like it's not the platform, it's the mobile friendliness. But most Shopify themes are you know, mobile friendly. So honestly you don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. Okay. That's my that's my thought. Okay. Okay. Uh, this personal question I have, um, does yeah. what's it got? Because you said mobile friendliness stuff like that. Does page load speed actually affect? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, it does. It does. So, um, is it the the one of the huge factors? I would say probably not. But uh, does it change the SEO game? Yeah, for sure. Because uh, you know you got to think about the user, right? Would anyone want to wait like longer than two seconds or four seconds for your website to load? If the answer is no, then you know that even if the traffic came from organic search and you were to bounce off after four seconds, what do you think is going to happen? You're just going to get a sale, right? The e-commerce conversion rate is really as low as it is, which is 3%. If they're going to bounce off, like if your website looks slowly, then how, how much lower do you think it's going to be as compared to 3%? So that is a question that must be answered in terms of like trying to speed up the website. Okay. Okay. That's great. Uh, Next question is from Sonia. Sonia asks, how, how can we know what are the top 10 research words on Google on a specific time? Okay, so I, I, I would think, uh, I think she's asking what are the top 10 uh, on the, like where you search the term. Do you understand the question? On a specific time? Uh, I guess maybe the, the I think, top okay, 10. Okay. At, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I think what I'm trying to understand from her question, right, is that, uh, like, for instance, last month, right, like, what are the results that actually show up for last month <laughs> so that you can kind of keep track of your rankings, right? I mean, correct me yeah, if I'm wrong. I, I, I think so, yes. Yeah, so I would say don't try to worry about that because it doesn't really do anything. What you want to worry about is, like, uh, is, are, are you doing the correct things in terms of, like, optimizing your website to show up on Google? And then subsequently, you can keep track of the rankings by benchmarking them on a monthly basis. That's what you want to worry about. And you can actually just take a look at your Google Search Console, right? Because Google Search Console does that for you. You can actually see all the rankings and you know, the average positions and the clicks and the impressions all from Google Search Console. So you can monitor that with a 100% free tool. So like, second of the matter is like, try not to obsess over like, you know, all the SEO quote unquote experts, you know, they tell you, oh, you got to do a certain thing, you got to do a hack that will kind of just dramatically take your website to the first page of Google. Just focus on building a brand, focus on building a store. If paid traffic works, just go and use paid traffic. Don't, don't try to take, try, don't try to do SEO before paid traffic. You know what I mean? It's just not going to work. Because the reality is if you can't like optimize like your, your store based on paid traffic, right? it's very difficult for your store to optimize based on organic traffic. Yeah. Cause use paid traffic to test the offer. You know what I mean? Like if the offer sucks, right? The market will tell you. So you don't have to wait for organic traffic to tell you that the offer sucks. Most of the time it's not the traffic source. It's not about hiring my agency to send you like 10,000 visits per month. It's not about that. It's about the offer. If the offer sucks, right? No matter how many website visitors you throw and you pump into your store, it's just not going to convert. So always think about the offer and always think about uh, the user in mind. Okay. Okay. That's it. So yeah. next question. Uh, yeah. Daniel, you have a question? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Anders, Anders, asks, uh, Anders and Sonia are quite similar. Do you recommend any SEO tools? Which one do you use? And Sonia asks, do you have any alternatives to keywords everywhere, which is free? Uh, we are a professional SEO agency. We use paid tools. Um, so if you want free tools for like keyword research, I think you can try Uber Suggest, Google Keyword Planner. They are mostly fine. We use paid tools like Ahrefs. Uh, we use Screaming Frog for technical SEO. And we use a tool called Agency Analytics to kind of keep track of uh, the client's rankings and uh, to kind of have the reporting standards in place. Uh, so 
those are pretty much the tools that we use. We also use Active Campaign, uh, but that's more for like marketing automation, not so much for SEO. Uh, but actually, it, it's an ecosystem, right, by itself, because like if you can send emails to like drive traffic to your website, it helps the SEO in overall, right? Because you're building your brand via email marketing. So to me, like SEO is just like a small part of digital marketing, right? You really want to look at it holistically. Like how can you build a brand via digital marketing so that your SEO will naturally like just kick in, right? Yeah. So that's my take. Okay. Sorry. Just repeat. So active campaign, agency analytics, uh, screaming frog. What, sorry. What Ahrefs. 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 Yeah. I mean, some agencies they use SEMrush and stuff, but typically like we, we are okay using Ahrefs. Okay. So I mean, what, what's the difference between Ahrefs, SEMrush, uh, yeah, the, the tools the, the tools are pretty similar. Uh, for for SEMrush, they have a more comprehensive like on page SEO audit. Uh, but we kind of have our own uh audit template in place that we use. So you just gotta use that instead. And if it gets us like the results that we want, then we're just happy using that. Yeah. Okay, okay, I understand. Uh, Sonia asked last one from her. How to ensure a website block ranks on Google? I guess I guess the keyword here is in intro. <laughs> uh, that's very generic of a question. So, like I said, if you use, um, uh, I, I guess like, give her action steps. Uh, action steps. Yeah. Of like yeah, right sure. now, what can yeah. Yeah. So I can't actually prescribe anything to you unless I have your stores like URL or something. Like maybe you wanna, <laughs> you wanna send me that. Because it's very hard, until I can diagnose what the issue is, right? It's very hard for me to tell you. So maybe you can give me like a source URL. We can do a live audit for your website. Uh, okay, I'll try to get it later. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question first. Okay, okay. What, and, and let's ask, what's your go-to strategy for getting a good ROI for e -com? I think you got to find a product market fit. Like, honestly, a lot of times people ask me, Jim, can you give me that one silver bullet that will just magically increase my rankings and suddenly I will just have a seven figure of sales like per month? My response to that is, look, if you don't have a product market fit, right, you can't even have fat enough of margins to, you know, scale your business, then it's the product market fit that is the issue, right? It means that there's not enough demand for what is it that you're offering. And if you're trying to educate the market on what is it that you're offering, then you must have fed enough of a budget to play with, right? If you think about like back in the, the you know, the early, uh, you know, uh, early days, like 2004, 2005, when Steve Jobs was like trying to uh, educate the market on iPhones, right? Like Steve Jobs was basically saying, oh, you need to buy an iPhone. Do you know why? Because you want to watch like, you want to watch like, uh, what do you call it, videos, right, on your iPhone, and you need a bigger screen to do that, right? That was what he was trying to educate the market. But he can educate the market because he's Apple. So he has the ability to educate the market to influence people. So I don't know uh, whether, you know, you have that kind of influence. Probably not. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this call. But I don't know. If you do, then good, great, right? But if you don't, then you got to really understand product market fit, right? If whatever you're selling out there in the marketplace is just not what people are looking for in terms of a demand kind of thing, then it doesn't matter like how much you do in terms of SEO or Facebook ads or Google ads or whatever it is. It doesn't matter, right? Google shopping or whatever. It doesn't matter because it's not what people are looking for. So it's just not going to cut it. Okay. But I guess specific specific go to strategies <laughs> besides product market fit, right? What's the actionable? Okay, I can do this step one, step two, step three right now for my e-commerce. Yeah, side. yeah, definitely. Like I okay, I have a like nice little six step checklist that you guys can go and check out. Uh, let me just can I just put it in the chat? Or? Uh, you want to share your screen or? Uh, <laughs> okay, I tell you what, I I think I'll just share my screen. Okay, I'll make you the host. Give me a sec. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Uh, case study. Hang on. Um. 
Yeah, do you guys see my screen? Yep. All right, so this little case study here, right? Uh, we basically help our client like obtain about 15K of online sales 21 days, zero dollars in ads, zero dollars, literally none. Uh, so it's a six step checklist. If you watch the video, it's just gonna be a six step checklist. So just, all I need is like an opt-in, right? Name and email, done, you get a case study. Yeah, so, uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so that, that's that. Uh, if you're able to kind of uh, do that, then uh, yeah, you can actually get a six step checklist. It's literally the six most important steps that you can implement to see some results, literally. Okay, Jim, you, you want to tell yeah. us what the six steps are? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. So like number one, right, is basically to perform keyword research uh, using like, it, by means of like Ahrefs or screaming, uh, SEMrush or Google Keyword Planner, whichever it is, and make sure that the keywords that you're targeting has keyword search volume. Okay, so basically it means that whatever that the keywords that you're targeting must have people searching for it, yeah? And then step number two, uh, basically is to adjust like the URL, uh, excuse me, adjust the title tag of the page. So like, for example, if the keyword that we were targeting was like something like bread delivery Singapore, then we want to change the title tag to bread delivery Singapore, right? And then at the back of the title tag, we put something like free delivery, which would naturally entice people to click on our search result as compared to our competitors. Yeah. And then the third, thing that you want to do is you want to change the URL structure to contain the keyword that you want to target. So in our case, it's like bread delivery Singapore. So we just changed the URL structure to like, uh, you know, the website URL and then forward slash bread dash delivery. And then the fourth step that we did, right, was basically to include the main keyword on the web page itself. So uh, basically like the on the web page itself, right, we kind of included like free bread delivery in Singapore all the way at the top. And we put it as a H1 tag, meaning a heading one tag, right? You know, in computer, I mean, in HTML, uh, there is this thing called H1. So you just want to put it as H1 for your main, on your main keyword. And then step number five is basically, it's linked actually, it's to create that e-commerce like storefront, right? <laughs> that contains of all the products. So specific to our scenario, there's like 80 products on that page. Literally 80 bread, different kinds of bread for you to choose from. And uh, that's basically, the, 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 and then you just want to make sure that you name all the breads like with different names, right? It's all unique in terms of their names. And then step number six, we basically promoted the website. Yes, that's right. You heard me promote the website by on your social media, on your email list, wherever it is, right? Go and promote it. Yeah, so specific to our client, that client had like about 2,000 likes or 2,000 followers on Facebook. We just posted like organically for them and give or take like within close to 21 days, like the, <laughs> the site just ranked, man. Yeah, I shit you not. It's, it, it, that, that, that was how we did 14K of sales within 21 days. Zero dollars in ads, yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. Uh, okay, and this next question. Put you yeah. on the spot here. Uh, what's what's your client's uh, econ client's typical ROI when uh, using your service? So, like for this guy, right, this um, bread delivery guy, he gave us probably about. I mean, we did. Uh, okay, let's talk about ROAS first um, for SEO, right? So he gave us probably about I would say four k in total for like SEO. Like work. budget to build links or yeah 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 everything okay. everything like to build the site to uh to build the site on WooCommerce to do the technical SEO to do the on page SEO to build the link like we didn't really build much links for his case because it's a it's a less competitive niche he didn't need links he need promotion and he needs engagement on social media and then we just did the organic social media post for him and then so. All in all, he spent like somewhere between four to six K and currently he's doing about 40 K right now. Like that's his, his revenue right now is 40 K. Yep. Within the span of like two to three months. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Uh, next question for Mendes. Have you done SEO for any uh, print on demand stores of some sort? And what has the results been like? 
print on demand? Is it like custom printing shops? Uh, yeah, correct. So imagine yeah. you, you don't do the fulfillment, but you just create the designs and stuff. So I mean, you, I mean I'm guessing you haven't done it, but I guess what is the advice for him in that sense? Yeah. Yeah, so we actually did like uh, some sort of like website design, right? Plus SEO for the this guy that was doing like custom printing. So I'm not sure whether that is similar to print on demand. I would say... Okay, print on demand is like a... a imagine like the fulfillment printing center in the US. They, yeah. You just send them the graphics and design and then yeah. they help you. If the customer comes in, the order, it goes to the their back end and then they fulfill everything. So you as the store owner, you don't do any work except marketing. Oh, okay, okay. So, so it's a white label. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah mean, correct. I, in a I've sense, heard, yeah. I've, I've heard of this. Yeah, so actually there are a lot of stores that are doing this as well. Uh, what is my advice, right? I think uh, just make sure that your website kind of like follows the six steps that I listed earlier on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think you kind of have, like, want to segregate, right, your products as well. So like, for example, if you have custom printing for marks, custom printing for shirts, custom printing for t-shirts, custom printing for corporate gifts, custom printing for pens, custom printing for whatever it is like just create separate pages and target keywords for each specific page that's that's the secret sauce really because uh everybody tries to rank like their home page for all the keywords right it's not possible because google looks at your website in such a way that oh like a specific page is hyper hyper specific to something and you just want to rank it for that uh term itself rather than having to spread it too thin and then try to target your home page for everything it's not possible yeah, so don't mm-hmm. don't try to do that. Okay, understand. Uh, okay, so I mean this last question for and that's quite yeah. similar to to I think Sonia's one. It's like, at yeah, what yeah. stage do you recommend starting putting proper effort <laughs> into SEO? Yeah, like I said, right? Like if your paid traffic no longer gets profitable, like you can't, you can no longer put one dollar in and get two dollars out. That's when you want to start considering seriously, because. Until you reach the tipping point, right, where performance marketing, like, is unable, where paid traffic is unable to get you the profitability, right, you want to con- consider an alternative source uh, and try to use uh, SEO as a form of, like, traffic source to kind of get you there. But it's not the traffic source, really. Most of the time, it's the psychology, right, like, the offer that sucks, right? That's why your Facebook ads is starting to get less and less profitable because your your margins are not fat enough, right, for you to create an irresistible offer. That's why your customers are bouncing off. That's why they no longer want to buy anymore. So, like, try to, try to stop thinking about the magic bullet that will, you know, suddenly explode your rankings on Google. Try to focus on the customer and obsess over the customer. Like, what is it that the customer is looking out for? What are they, look, uh, uh, you know, trying to obtain in the marketplace from you that your competitors can't offer. Think about that for a second. Just sit down one day and think about that. A lot of the times, right, people like are so obsessed over like the latest chatbot technology, the latest 18 step funnel on like <laughs> 18 step email funnel, you know, the abandoned cut sequence, everything. Like stop thinking about that. Start thinking about your offer first before you do anything else in, in marketing, yep. right? And then I think that will answer like your question. Okay. Can I mean uh, I think quite similar in the sense we talk about how to make an irresistible offer and I, the, the way mm. I teach this group is stuff. Okay, so mm. you know what your customer wants, right? And then mm. the number one desired result that they want. And then you yeah. sell them on okay, result, 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 without mm. all the things they hate. So I mean I'm not sure how you see how to craft offer, but how would you yeah. uh, craft your irresistible offer, yeah. Yeah, so like typically I want to do a little bit of competitor research, right? To find out what is it that my competitors are offering. And then I, for example, if they have a better guarantee, right? Then I'll just want to double their guarantee, right? For example, if they say that they have a two years warranty, I want to say I have a four years warranty. For example, if their pricing is like, I don't know, $80, I just want to put like $79. <laughs> so <laughs> undercut them by offering doubling the guarantee yeah. and then making sure that the product quality is actually not compromised. Like I'm not going to do drop shipping. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to drop ship a shitty product from China and then 200% the margin and, you know, suddenly I earn a fatter margin than my competitors. That's not what it's about. It's about benefiting the customer and 
on top of that, what, what kind of other free stuff can I throw in? Oh, suddenly I can throw in free delivery. Oh, suddenly I can throw in a free gift for you. If you're buying a mug, I'm going to give you water so that you can put water inside the mug. You know what I mean? Like, give complimentary stuff that can, like, benefit your uh, customer. And that's really how you craft an irresistible offer, right? Like a lot of the times, right, you see, um, I mean, I'll just give you that an example. Uh, so like if you look at, uh, uh, what's that store? Okay, so there's this store called, uh, like, Cots, right? Cots? Okay, uh, to listeners, <laughs> Cots is a department <laughs> store that sells electronics. Yeah, so go ahead, Jim. Yeah, yeah. So, like in Singapore, we have this uh, uh, departmental store. It's called Cots. Uh, they kind of quote unquote, right, have an irresistible offer in the sense that if you can find a, a product, like uh, another store, right, that sells a cheaper product than them, they would refund you uh, the product in full. Okay, but what if the <laughs> us entrepreneurs like, we can't find a cheaper product, man? We're not we're not trying to compare our price here, right? Trying to compete. Yeah, no, 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 no. So you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, that's what I mean. So if you can't compete on price, then you compete on value. And when you compete on value, you want to double the guarantee. What 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 can you guarantee that your competitors can't guarantee? Oh, suddenly I can guarantee that your product will will reach within the next two days. Suddenly I can guarantee that if you dislike our product, we will refund you the product in full. Yeah. That's a guarantee. And that guarantee must be tied according to what is stopping your customer from buying the product itself. Like for example, if I want to buy a, like now there's a lot of free plus shipping funnels out there, right? If I want to buy a book, right? Like any book out there that costs like $19.95. So what's, what's going to be a great guarantee for that is if I hate the book and I don't get any value of the book, the person will refund me the shipping costs for free. And that's what a lot of gurus do, right? Like Ping Jun and, or not like that's what they're doing right so that's how they craft their offer to make it so compelling that it's impossible for me to resist because they are at a level where they have fed enough of profit margins to kind of like you know keep their competition alive so that's how i craft the irresistible offers uh, as much as i advise my clients to do so some of them are still unwilling to do it like they just don't understand the, 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 the concept of a backend and the cost of acquiring a customer and the fact that, you know, they need to kind of beat their pants off their competitors, right? Because it doesn't matter how much traffic I send to their site, but if their offer sucks, right? And it's just not going to work. Yep. Yeah, I understand. That's good, that's good. Uh, okay, Daniel, uh, <laughs> you're the only one kind of in the call. Uh, do you need, do you want Jim to audit your site? Or is okay, it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's your choice. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, yeah. Not? So, uh, I'll send you the link uh, through the chat. Yep. Yeah, sure, sure. Let's do that. Yeah. You get free consultation. <laughs> okay. Uh, sounds good. Uh, uh, for the record, I have not put any effort in the SEO so far. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, you can uh, share your screen right. Yeah, hang on. Let me just bring up the. Uh, let, let me just open the necessary tools required to do the audit first. Okay. Uh, okay. Before we before we do anything else. Okay. So I I I think what would be useful for Daniel is, uh, first tell him what's wrong, <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, tell yeah. him what yeah how to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, bring up my checklist. I actually have a free audit checklist as well. You guys can grab that later on. I'll give you a, I'll give you guys a link as well. Uh, Jim, after you call, you just uh, send me the link. Uh, then I'll put, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Not an issue. Uh, let me bring up the audit template. Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, how, how long has this site been around, uh, Daniel? The URL is is quite new, so I bought this URL uh, like two weeks ago. But uh, the site was going under a different uh, URL. But it's like mm. one and a half years old overall. Mm, okay, uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, it yeah. started as a general store, and uh, I changed it to a dog niche store. 
recently. And so uh, it's a yeah. So it's a dot niche uh, kind of industry, right? Yeah, that's correct. And the first okay. one, the harness, is the actual the selling product now. Which one is it? Uh, the one? first one. This the one. Harness. Oh, yeah, that's oh. How 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 much in revenue are you doing right now for this store? It's around thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. So like when I audit the site, right? I usually just like uh put the it the URL inside Ahrefs to kind of see like is it ranking for any organic keywords? But mm -hmm. excuse me, I think that your site is still relatively new, right? You say it's uh two what was it two weeks old? Yes. So uh if it's two weeks old, that's probably the reason why it's not showing up for like any keywords as well. Because there's this thing called Google Sandbox, right? Which means that Google actually dislikes new domains. Uh, and you could see this is the audit template that I use. Uh, we want to check, like, have you installed all these things, right? Like Google Analytics and Search Console on your website. And then whether the site redirects the preferred version and all this kind of stuff. Uh, typically, if you're on Shopify, are you on Shopify? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So typically, if you're on Shopify, right, then uh, it's generally fine. Because Shopify takes care of all that for you, uh, like most of the stuff here. Uh, so in the indexation, you can't really control that much because it's Shopify. Uh, okay. So another thing is like I'll typically go to Screaming Frog. Uh, Screaming Frog, which is actually a, a a tool that crawls your website. I can actually see all the pages that is on your website. See that? So what I want to do is I want to go to like page titles and take a look at the titles of the page. So you can see that for the bulk of your titles, right? They're actually like unique, which is a good thing. Which is what like, okay, I mean, there are some duplicates, but uh, they are mostly unique. So to see like, uh, if there are duplicates, right? You kind of just want to, you know, fix the duplicates because uh, it's not good for you to have duplicate title text because they are basically competing for the same keywords and uh, Google would not know which is the, the page that you want to rank for that keyword of like dog toothbrush, right? Um, Daniel, where does the bulk of your customers come from? Uh, from the United States. Okay, so you want to kind of go into Ahrefs and perform like keywords research, right? Uh, in the United States and put something like dog toothbrush store, right? Uh, click on phrase match. Uh, okay, maybe not store, maybe just dog toothbrush. Uh, you can see there's like 7,700 people searching for this, right? Uh, but this is a keyword difficulty of eight on a scale of zero to 100, which means that you might stand a chance uh, for that. Uh, but I can see there's a lot of other ones here, like Bright Bite, Bite Dog Toothbrush. This is called Ace Dog Harness, right? Uh, I just want to see if anybody is searching for Ace Dog Harness. Uh, yeah, there actually really isn't. Anybody searching for this? But anyways, uh, so it largely depends on like what the keyword is. So if let's say you want to optimize for something like buy dog toothbrush, uh, then you know you just want to put in things like uh, buy dog toothbrush in your title tag, so that your uh, so that Google can detect that that page is largely largely relevant for uh, dog toothbrush, and therefore it will rank higher. But because your site is so new, right? It's usually better for you to target something like longer tail uh, as compared to something as short as dog toothbrush because it will be impossible for you to compete with like all these other guys, right? Like all these other people here, like Amazon and then like all these websites that are way more authoritative than, than, than your website. So uh, that's what I would do uh, if I were you uh, to kind of target like a longer tail keyword that uh, you know, maybe something like dog toothbrush kit, right? This might be a keyword that you might, might want to target instead. Uh, but I'm not sure whether yours is a kit. Is it a kit? No, it's not. Okay, it's not a kit. Yeah. So, yeah, then we generally want to just put uh, dog toothbrush uh, instead. And yeah, that's probably it. But just put something longer tail, like uh, buy dog toothbrush online. Something like buy dog toothbrush and toothpaste, that kind of thing. Where to buy dog toothbrush and toothpaste, yeah? On the on the title tag. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh if you wanna 
look at the rest, like the meta description, you want to make sure that the meta description contains the main keywords as well. And then uh, same goes for the H1. The H1 of each page should be targeting the main keyword. And for you, you actually got that in ready because it's Shopify. Uh, and then if you look at the rest here, the schema markup, uh, the Google My Business, these are all for local, so it's local only. Uh, but for yours, it's more like, like an international thing or a national thing. So uh, I would say in terms of the web design sort of things, uh, there is one thing that I would improve on, which is to put the free shipping like as a site-wide notification, right? Which is something like that. Uh, so that wherever they go on the website, right, they will actually see that, uh, you know, this thing will be hanging around here, right? And that would naturally okay. entice them to check out as compared to, you know, just having it. Just here. So this is something that I would definitely recommend you to try to explore. Uh, and uh, you got a site search as well. It's over here. You got social media on your website. You got call to action above your highest traffic pages, right? Um, generally, what I want to do is I want to put like something on top here, right? Like, oh, uh, get twenty dollars off your first order or something like that, right? Like uh, something that would uh, entice your user to give you their name and email so that you can start selling them more stuff in the future. You got that, Daniel? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, that being said, right, that's just for phase one. It's mostly the technical stuff. And then for phase two, right, we generally want to go into like the, the keyword research and pull out all the keywords that your website can rank for. So uh, in this case, when you do the keyword research, who's your biggest competitor out there? Uh, Joyride. Joyride. How do I hold on, How do I spell it? Yeah, that's that's correct. Joyride harness. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to just paste the URL in. You can see that they got about one thousand three hundred dollars in organic uh in traffic value. They got four thousand three hundred organic traffic. So what I want to do is I want to click on organic keywords in Ahrefs and then go into United States, go into position rankings. And basically, yeah, this is all the keywords that he is ranking for. And you can basically just steal their keywords, right? Look at this, like rainbow dog harness. There's like 50 people searching for it monthly. And then it's like a zero keyword difficulty. Look at that, zero keyword difficulty, right? So. That's something that you can go and target as well. Zero keyword difficulty. And then there's another one here. Flemish giant harness, zero as well. Yeah. Then we got another one. Okay, let's filter it by the keyword difficulty. Because right now your store is starting from scratch, right? You need to target the keywords that are of zero keyword difficulty or less. Look at all this. This is a gold mine for you, Daniel. Look at that. Thank you very much. Yeah. So literally, like, I would just go and start targeting all these keywords keyword difficulty of zero, so that you can basically rank for all this stuff. Look at it. Look at it. Just go target all these keywords that has zero. And the way you can do that is you want to start creating like products that, you know, uh, answers all these queries or blog articles that con that, that kind of uh, is a listicle of all these things, right? So let me give you a very simple example. So for example, if you were to type in this keyword, Freelance Web Design Singapore, right? Like you can kind of see that this is my website, yeah? Ranking for on the first, on the feature snippet for this. And the reason why we are doing that is because we actually created a listicle, literally a listicle of the 12 people that are the best web designers in Singapore. So obviously the first person is me, and then you gotta give yourself like a voting up. And then like the second person is obviously my team member. And then obviously you wanna go there and give it a voting up. And then, um, yeah, the third person is actually also my team member. So I just want to keep it holding up. And then the rest is just other people that I don't ever know in my entire life, but I just put them there because Google likes that and Google is going to rank that article for me. So believe it or not, right, I get about four to five like leads coming in, like just based off like this keyword that we show up for. And typically a client is worth about $3,000 to us. So yeah, just saying. I'm not here to brag or anything, by the way. I'm just sharing what works for me and how you can implement it in your store. You mean so far, Daniel? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. 
uh, awesome. I think that pretty much covers like where the lowest lying fruit is in your store. And hopefully you can execute on that. I can actually pass you this checklist. Do you, do you have Ahrefs? No, Jim, I, I, think, I think we don't have Ahrefs. Okay, okay. You, if you don't time, have Ahrefs, yeah. right, just go and use this tool. It's called Uber Suggest. Uh, let's go and pull your competitors' keywords in again. Uh, Joyride. Harness. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to copy and paste his uh, URL inside here. Yeah, and then just wait for that to show up. Uh, so you can see uh, it's just going to pull up all the traffic, the, the keywords and everything. So you can see these are all the keywords, right? And then it's the same thing. It's pretty similar as the tool. Uh, it contains all the, the SEO keywords. So even in, at this point, right, you can actually take a look at the search difficulty. Uh, if the search difficulty is like too high, then there's no point in you trying to target them. Uh, if it's like empty uh, or it's like green and stuff, then obviously you can go and target those. Yeah. Okay. You got to sign in though. I actually don't really use Uber Suggest too much, but I know it's free. So like, I know like if you are start just starting out and you don't want to invest, you know, hundred hundreds of dollars for a dress for a monthly subscription, you can definitely use, uh, uh, Uber suggest. Yeah, I'm uh, familiar with uh, Google suggest and the uh, Uber 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 suggest Uber suggest. Okay. Yeah, Uber suggest is by New Patel, so just go ahead and use that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, happy to help. Daniel, okay. got any last questions? <laughs> no, that's all for me. Okay, Ken. Uh, yeah, Jim. So. Um, that is pretty much it. Uh, I guess you have any final words? Uh, well, um, that's all the questions. I think, so. Cool. Uh, I think, yeah, a lot of times uh, I always get this question every day. Right? <laughs> People just come up to me and ask me like, uh, like how do I rank my website number one? And how do I like uh, get this amazing amount of like traffic that you have for like other people and stuff. Like to me, none of that stuff matters until you have like created a winning product and a winning service, you know, for your customers. Because try not to obsess over how your website or how your uh, Facebook ads can suddenly like explode in sales. Try to focus on a customer first. Like identify what is it, what is the white hot uh, offer, right? That you can put out there that your competitors will immediately just snap by, you know, what kind of guarantees can you make that your competitors can't make? That's where I would put 80% of my time on seriously. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those are my last words, man. I think people just got to start, uh, optimizing for the, the offer more of like optimizing for the, the, the user side of things more as compared to looking for that, like silver bullet when it comes to, getting an insane amount of organic traffic. Yeah. Okay, Ken. Mm. Uh, you stop sharing screen. <laughs> okay, Ken. How, how do I? <laughs> Hang on, I think my, my Zoom uh, floating bar just went away. Let me try to get it back. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Can you disable I, the share? It's, it's fine, lah. am I? Okay, okay. Ken. Uh, Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you, Jim, so much for your time. For yeah, yeah, no worries. A full hour and stuff. Uh, where where can people yeah. find you? Uh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. So like, if um, you guys wanna like find me, you can actually Google this term, um, best SEO Singapore, I guess. Uh, so just go ahead and type that on Google. You can actually find me. So yeah. Uh, okay. Just, just make sure there's no spaces. <laughs> just key in one term. Okay, best okay, SEO okay, Singapore. Okay. We got, we got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay, yeah. Daniel, last question before yeah. Jim hops off. No, I yeah. just want to thank you for your time and effort. Yeah, no worries, man. Happy to help, Daniel. Okay, Ken. Thanks so much, guys, for your time. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. cool. See you. Okay. okay. Uh, thank, oh, thanks for having me, Jonathan. Yeah, yep. I'm going to mention no that. Okay. See you, see you. All right. See you guys. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye.